that. Okay, my screen. Just a minute. I hope my screen is visible now. So today we are going to talk about a very important element of your diet, that is minerals. So before starting uh, with today's talk, let me ask you a very simple question. Uh, just tell me, are vitamins and minerals the same thing? Anyone? Are yeah. vitamins and Unmute whoever minerals wants to speak out. Okay, uh, so let's just uh, begin with today's presentation without any delay. So when we talk about minerals, minerals, these are micronutrients which are required by your body in very uh, small amounts. And these are inorganic nutrients which play a very important role in a variety of functions. So you will be uh, surprised to know that they form only 7% of the composition of the human body. And these minerals, they are widely distributed in foods so that a well-balanced diet can supply them in sufficient quantities. Now, there are two types of minerals. When we talk about one are your micro ones and the other one are your trace ones. So, when we talk about the uh, principal elements or you can say your macro minerals, these are the ones which you require in your diet in an amount more than 100 milligrams per day. So these are required in large amounts by your body, you can say like that. And they constitute around 60 to 80% of all the inorganic material in your body. On the other hand, when we talk about micronutrients, for example, copper, selenium, these elements, they occur in the living tissues in very small amounts. And they are called as micronutrients, so you can say micro minerals, because they are required in amounts less than 100 milligrams per day. Now, this is the uh, basic categorization of minerals. The major minerals are your calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, potassium, sulfur, sodium, and chlorine. And when we talk about the uh, micro minerals, you have copper, manganese. Zinc, selenium, cobalt, iodine. So today, uh, we are not going to cover all of them, but definitely the ones which are very much important, especially in the elderly population. So when we talk about calcium, so when we talk about calcium, you know, you must be thinking about milk, dairy products, right? Today, we will be discussing about the important functions that calcium plays in our body and what are the other sources of calcium. So, the major mineral, the major macro mineral in your body is calcium. It's very much abundant in your body. So, you can say that almost 99% of your calcium is present in your teeth and in your bones. And the remaining calcium is present in your blood and the other soft tissues like muscles and heart. Now, what are the functions of calcium? So, we all know that calcium plays a very important role in bone structure. It, it keeps your bones healthy. It also plays an important role in muscle contraction, in nerve impulse transmission. So, basically, even in brain health, it has a role to play. In bone healing, it has an important role to play and also in the overall cellular metabolism. Now, when we talk about the sources of calcium, so there are uh, three food items which are, you know, which are high sources and there are few which are good sources. Means that the uh, level of calcium varies among different food items. So tofu, yogurt, cheese, ragi, as I as I always say that uh, ragi is one of a very good source of um, calcium. Then you have your milk. Sesame seeds, your sardines, these are few of the sources which may provide you good amount of calcium. Then other than that, there are also uh, categorization as per the animal products and the plant products. 
Another product, I'm pretty sure you all know. But what are the plant products which are rich in calcium? So you have your uh, sesame seeds, you have your green leafy vegetables and other nuts and seeds. You have your ragi, you have your legumes and grains which provide you good amount of calcium. So always remember, the animal products, definitely they are a good source of calcium, but even the plant products provide you good amount of calcium. Now, especially in the elderly, calcium plays a very important role in uh, bone health, right? So basically in the bones, calcium is present in the hydro appetite form. And the dietary requirements of calcium as per DRDA by ICMR NIN for an elderly man and elderly woman is around 1200 milligrams per day. Now, when we talk about how the calcium is absorbed in the growth, right? So, first of all, remember one thing that, you know, whatever you are eating, like whatever foods you are eating, which are calcium rich, only 30% of calcium that you eat is absorbed. And the absorption of calcium, it varies across different physiological conditions. For example, uh, especially in the old age, the absorption of calcium decreases because of uh, various reasons. And also in pregnancy and infancy, so those are the stages where the calcium absorption is quite efficient. But in old age, it is the means. And also in women who are post menopausal because in that particular phase, in the postmenopausal phase, the estrogen levels, they decrease, which in turn lower your calcium absorption to around 20%. So that is why it's always said that, you know, after you cross the age of 30, uh, the uh, calcium, the uh, bone remodeling and everything, it starts on decreasing and also the calcium absorption starts decreasing. So it's very much important to maintain good store of calcium in your body right from the starting. There are few factors which will affect your absorption of calcium. The most important factor is the presence of anti-nutrients like your phytates and auxiliates in your food. They may be present in your community vegetables or in the cereals or grains which you are eating. Apart from it, even a high supplement dose of phosphorus and magnesium can affect the absorption of calcium. And also, always remember that calcium and vitamin D, they are like best friends. So if your intake of vitamin D is low, then definitely your uh, calcium intake or, or your calcium absorption will also be low. So in case your levels of vitamin D are not good, then definitely you can have calcium deficiency. Now, what are the factors which will promote the absorption of calcium? So a good amount of vitamin D intake and if there is an acidic environment in the stomach, good levels of exercise is very much important and there are other factors. Now when we talk about the best friend of calcium, that is vitamin D. So you should know that vitamin D plays a very important role in calcium absorption. I won't go into the major detail part, but just a brief overview. Always remember that when we talk about the active form of vitamin D, it is 125-dihydroxypolycalciferol. This is the active form of vitamin D. So whenever there is you know, low levels of calcium in your body, so the small intestine, the bone and your kidney will eventually you know, cause the calcium levels to increase by either by releasing vitamin D or with, with the help of your hormone known as PTH, that is a parathyroid hormone. So it's a whole, you know, a complex uh, mechanism, which we won't be going that much into detail. But for now, what you need to understand is that calcium and vitamin D, both of them are very much important for your bone health because they help in bone mineralization. Okay, they help in promoting your bone growth. Now, this is a very common condition, uh, especially in the elderly, that is osteoporosis. So, many of you might be having, you know, a knee pain or, you know, you might be uh, feeling difficult to climb stairs, right? What exactly is osteoporosis? Osteoporosis, as the word suggests, 
osteo means bones and porosis means your porous bone so bones basically become fragile the bone density so the bone density starts declining after the age of 30 okay so the bone density declines and the quality of your bone basically deteriorates which will make your bones very much fragile and vulnerable to fracture right so bone mineral density is uh, also used you know like we see that uh, if your bone mineral density is good it means that your bone strength is good right so again calcium along with vitamin d is very much important to maintain a good bone mineral density so this is how it looks this is how a healthy bone looks and this is how a bone with osteoporosis looks and women especially are uh, more prone to this condition now let's talk about another major mineral that is magnesium so when we talk about the functions of magnesium the functions are almost similar to calcium uh, apart, but there's a minor difference that if we talk about the uh, role of uh, you know like whether calcium or magnesium plays a more important role in nervous function then definitely magnesium has a very important role to play even in uh, you know clinical conditions like alzheimers and parkinson's disease magnesium supplementation helps a lot in improving the symptoms so it's a very important uh, and the most abundant divalent cation in the living system and uh, most of it is found in combination with calcium and phosphorus and a small percentage is found in your soft tissues and your body fluids the elderly requirements are as follows for an elderly man it is 120 mg per day and an elderly woman it is 320 mg per day these are the sources of magnesium so basically your almonds pumpkin seeds spinach peanuts okay uh, your oatmeal avocado cashews all these are very good sources of magnesium and this picture depicts the role of magnesium in your body so definitely it has a role to play in regulating the heart muscle contraction it also controls hypertension it plays an important role in the clotting mechanism and also a very important role in muscle contraction let me tell you the uh, energy currency of our cell that was atp so magnesium is a very important core factor of atp right and it also improves insulin function so even in the diabetics magnesium plays a very important role in improving the insulin sensitivity right and also it plays a role in protein synthesis so again functions are quite many so it's a very important part of our diet now uh, this is a very interesting uh, study which was done by harvard where they showed that uh, stress depletes the reserve of magnesium in your body so basically it's a vicious cycle okay of stress and magnesium deficiency so in case of person you know uh, is very much stressed out there are chances that that person might have depleted stores of magnesium in his or her body right and uh, the symptoms of magnesium deficiency are fatigue mild anxiety headache irritability and an upset stomach so this is the whole mechanism and i'm going to go in Kanishka, we can't hear you. She is frozen. Uh, I think we call lost her connection. Uh, Kanishka, you are muted. Kanishka. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, there's uh -huh. some network like, issue. I think that was why. Uh, I don't know, uh, like. how much you guys were able to hear but anyways i repeat okay okay i hope my ppt is good yeah we can yeah. see thank you thank you thank so, you as, yeah so basically stress and uh, magnesium deficiency there's a vicious cycle okay if a person is very much stressed 
out, it means that the amount or the levels of cortisol are quite high and this results in depleting the stones of magnesium in your body. Now you might face symptoms like, you know, fatigue, disability, headaches, you know, upset stomach. So it's very important for you all to notice these symptoms in your body and get a routine vitamin, uh, you know, checker, vitamin and minerals checker. So it is very much important. And as I told you, magnesium plays a very important role in boosting your brain. So basically, uh, there are, uh, you know, neurotransmitters. So basically, uh, magnesium plays an important role in communicating, uh, in the communication process between neurons by enabling the movement of these neurotransmitters, like you have GABA, etc. Not going into the detail of the scientific aspect. And apart from that, magnesium also prevents excessive calcium from building up. Okay. And it also reduces inflammation in the brain. So it plays a very important role in neurodegenerative diseases, especially in the case of dementia, which is very much common in the elderly population, right? And Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease. Next, let's talk about phosphorus. So again, uh, phosphorus is found in every cell of the human body. A major part of phosphorus is found in combination with calcium in the bones and teeth. And 10% of the phosphorus is combined with proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates. The remaining 10% is there in the various chemical compounds. So these are the foods which are high in phosphorus. A very significant one which I want to po point out is your cold drinks. So Coca-Cola, your fast food, canned fish, and even meat. These are the foods which have high amount of phosphorus. When we talk about the functions, the phosphorus mainly, yes, definitely is important for the formation of your bones and your teeth, right? It also plays a very important role in the formation and utilization of your ATP and the energy currency of cell. It has a very important role to play uh, by being a part of your nucleic acids like DNA and RNA. And most, most importantly, so there's a buffer system in your body known as the phosphate buffer system, which helps in maintaining a homeostasis. Right, so it's important for the maintenance of pH in the blood. This is the most important function of phosphorus. That is, it is important for the maintenance of pH in your blood. And there are other functions as well, but this is the most important one. Next, let's talk about uh, sodium. Sodium is the major uh, cation of your extracellular fluid. So, so when you look at uh, you know uh, the cell, so there's your extracellular fluid just outside the cell, and then you have the intracellular fluid. When we talk about sodium, it is majorly present in the extracellular fluid, and it has a major role to play in maintaining osmotic pressure. Okay. So when you talk about sodium, definitely it's there in the salt. But let's see what are the other sources from where you get sodium. And also a very important thing I would like to highlight is that say some, sometimes you'll be able to see, you know, sodium, you can call it visible sodium. But there's also hidden sodium in your foods. Let's see what are those foods. Okay, so the next slide. So first, I'll be talking about this. Okay, yeah. So these are your sources of sodium. Uh, basically, it's there in the dairy products. So even the dairy products like milk, cheese, and yogurt, they also contain sodium, right? It's in your meat, in your seafood, okay, in your processed foods. So your processed foods like your chips, okay, your cold drinks, all of them contain sodium. And even your sports drinks, the okay, tomato ketchup, soy sauce, all of these, they contain sodium. And also, you know, your medicine, so your antacids and certain pain relievers, they also contain sodium. And when we talk about the top sources of, uh, you know, sodium in your diet, some of you might say that, okay, we don't add much salt to our food, right? But if you are consuming a lot of bakery products, a lot of tomato ketchup or canned soups, canned meat, okay, sauces, processed meat, 
etcetera so then definitely you are consuming more amount of sodium in your diet so as i told you this is what you call as the hidden sodium in your diet which you might not see but it is there and it may contribute to a variety of medical conditions now what is a condition in which your sodium levels go down right so that condition is known as hyponatremia hyponatremia basically means low levels of sodium in your blood this might occur because of many uh, reasons so sometimes you know uh, like if there is excessive perspiration excessive sweating or uncontrolled vomiting and even chronic diarrhea may cause low sodium why because there is water loss along with there's a loss of salt along with your body fluids right so this is a major cause of hyponatremia and what are the symptoms so how to identify that whether you are low on sodium levels or not so there might be mild symptoms like if you are having you know frequent headaches or you feel very much fatigue or uh, maybe nausea so these are mild symptoms of hyponatremia low levels of sodium and if you are having quite frequent muscle cramps you're not able to think properly right so these are the moderate symptoms of hyponatremia and there can be severe as well as extreme symptoms severe symptoms include seizures some sort of respiratory distress or if you are in you know the extreme symptoms are again coma and death so you can imagine the amount of important sodium has in our blood so let's talk about iron so you all know that iron forms a very important part of hemoglobin in our red blood cells right so iron is primarily stored in the liver spleen and the bone marrow in the form of ferritin right and then there is this condition known as iron deficiency anemia so you can see over here this is like if you look at your hands right if you look at your palms basically and if the color is normal if they are you know you, these are your red blood cells your your uh, basically palms are not pale it means that you not suffering from anemia but if you see a hand palm which is very much pale or, or even face which is very much pale or if the nails are spoon shaped this indicates that the person is having iron deficiency anemia it's very much common in uh, children in adolescents even in the pregnant women but even in the elderly population right that's why it's very much important eat foods which are rich in iron also we'll be discussing what foods to avoid which can interfere with your iron absorption right what are the symptoms of iron deficiency anemia so it's very much important for you all to remember the symptoms of each and every mineral deficiency which will actually make you you know understand why it's important to consume a balanced diet which has all these minerals in it so in case you are uh, suffering you know fatigueness again okay, fatigueness dizziness pale or yellowish skin frequent headaches if your hands and feet are cold if there are you know irregular heart beats which you can definitely get to see by, by an ecg or if there is frequent chest pain these all are the symptoms of iron deficiency anemia what can be the causes the causes can definitely diet is one of the major cause yes but even the absorption you know in the old age we gastric uh, they all start to deteriorate right maybe your gut microbiota is not that strong not that good it's able to absorb iron or in case of any surgery right if you have any major surgery or uh, if there's peptic ulcer or any hookworm infection gastritis all these will affect the absorption of iron in your body and your diet definitely if you are uh, you know eating if you are having a diet which is completely vegan then yes there are chances of iron deficiency and if a person is malnourished and very important point uh, i think uh, this uh, we have discussed earlier also that is the presence of tannins so if you are consuming your tea with let's say a meat paratha right so this 
So the, basically, the tea contains tannins, which can interfere with the iron absorption. You're having that green leafy vegetable fats. Maple. It's very much important to uh, make sure to have right food combinations. So don't drink tea and you know uh, your food together. So don't ever combine them together. It's a wrong practice, which uh, many of us have been doing since quite a long time. And vitamin C. So vitamin C actually helps in uh, increasing the absorption of iron. So let's say you're having a chana cha, right? So just make sure that you squeeze a slice of lemon on it. Right. If you're having, like, let's say, uh, any item which is a good source of iron, make sure that you are having a source of vitamin C along with it. And other than that, there are also conditions in which uh, there can be iron deficiency. So in the case of pregnancy especially, or if a person is going through chemotherapy, right? And there are other reasons as well, like uh, inflammatory bowel disease, okay, on, uh, in case there is hemolysis, or there is uh, blood loss because of hematuria or maybe blood donations in case of cancer. So, which is again a multifactorial condition. Now, now you all know the uh, importance of you know the minerals in our body to look toxicity. What if you consume these minerals above the RDA, right? Above the water prescribed. So let's discuss about macro minerals toxicity, wherein we will especially talk about your sodium and potassium. So when we talk about sodium, okay, so you all know one thing, uh, that is blood pressure. Right? You all say that our blood pressure, but okay, okay, to do the blood pressure, it got increased. So this is a condition known as uh, hypertension. Okay, so before talking about hypertension, uh, just now we discussed about one term known as hyponatremia. Hyponatremia means low levels of sodium in your bloodstream. What is hyponatremia? Hyponatremia is a condition in which there is an increase in the sodium concentration in your bloodstream. And this can be very much toxic. Okay, It can even result in seizures and death. And the causes can definitely one major cause can be dehydration or loss of body fluid. And also, if you're using uh, certain blood pressure lowering medicines, symptoms uh, can be coma, paralysis of the lung muscles, uh, shrinkage of brain cells, which can result in confusion. Right? Now, what is hypertension? So, as per the World Health Organization, if you are consuming excess of sodium in your diet, Okay, and just now we saw that sodium can come from many sources. Sodium just does not come only from your salt. Okay, it can come from your bread, it can come from your milk, it can come from the processed foods which you eat, right? So if the levels of sodium is more than 5 grams per day, then definitely it can result in increased blood pressure, right? It can lead to high blood pressure. So uh, these are the symptoms like polydipsia, like that is increased amount of thirst, fatigue and muscle weakness, diarrhea and vomiting and restlessness. If we talk about potassium, so basically, uh, uh, yeah, if there is an increased level of potassium in your body, then what is normal? It will result in cardiac arrhythmia. So arrhythmia means irregular heartbeat. So it can result in irregular heartbeat, and it can also result in cardiac arrest. Right. So uh, what can be the causes of hyperkalemia? So uh, definitely, if there is uh, acute kidney failure, that is your kidneys are unable to filter the waste products from your blood. Right. And dehydration and other, uh, other reasons like you have your angiotensin to receptor blockers. So again, this is a whole part of uh, another system known as uh, renin angiotensin and a strong system, which we won't be discussing in detail. But yeah, what are the symptoms? The symptoms are very much important for us to understand, right? So chest pain. So always remember hyperkalemia can affect your heart severely, right? It can result in cardiac arrest. So chest pain, nausea and vomiting, muscle weakness and abdominal pain. These are three of the symptoms. 
that's all for today and if you have any questions uh, you can definitely ask me and i'll be happy to answer thank you Kim, please unmute yourselves if you have any questions or any clarification or any other information if you guys need. Yes, I, need one, I need one question, but my voice is not good. I'm sick. That's oh. why you see me here. No problem. No problem. <laughs> so the problem, uh, how you know the calcium is getting uh, not absorbing in your body? I cannot hear anything. Oh, Kanishka, I think uh, her connection is not good today. I think Kanishka uh, signed yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah, before the Let's question. wait for her. Let's wait for her. She, she might join back. Because I will tell you that uh, my um, mother's cousin, mm -hmm. so it's close relation with me. I have a heart problem. And mm -hmm. I have the surgery like 10 years before. Mm -hmm. But uh, I never seen that problem in my whole family, not in my father's side, not my mother's side. Mm -hmm. But like a couple of two, three months before, my cousin expired and he has some excess uh, calcium. Oh. So that's the problem with me that uh, I have extra calcium building on my heart. So, oh. how to solve the problem by itself? Because uh, I keep asking to the doctor and they don't know. They say the calcium deposit every time in the body. Some people has in the knees, some people here and there. Mm -hmm. So, isn't some people have the form of the kidney stone or something, you know. So, it's very... It's, not very clear how, why the body stored the calcium. Okay. I think uh, if Kanishka gets back, we can ask this same question to her. Did you consult? Uh, I mean, hmm. yeah, even my daughter is also a doctor and she say the same thing. We don't have any answer, you know. It's hmm. maybe the mineral, uh, you know, imbalance, something, something imbalance in the body. Hmm. And, but you're good to see you, Minaji. It's a long time. I did not see you. Yeah, I my both classes go together. I have to go to the gym. If I don't go, then, you know, you never do anything. <laughs> you have to promise yourself, right? Right. Mm 